Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please like, share, review, and subscribe. I am rich with anticipation today because I'm realizing that this is a special moment for me. This episode is set to air on May 4th, 2018. May 5th happens to be a special day for me. And in honor of that special day, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've received from you guys and let you know just a little bit more about who I am. You see, on May 5th, 2012, I got a phone call from a friend of a friend named Stephanie. Stephanie called me and now bear in mind at this point in time, I had babies, twin babies, and I was teaching school. And Stephanie, I'd met her once at a wedding shower. She calls me up and she says, side note, very brave, right? <laughs> she says, I hear you're great to talk to. Can I come over? Now, my first reaction to that was that it seemed strange. Um, you know, strange. <laughs> I barely knew her. But I said yes. And she came over and we sat down and we talked. And a few days later, one of her friends called me and said, I hear you're great to talk to. Can I come over? And she sent a friend who sent a friend who sent a friend. And the next thing I know, I'm seeing people almost every day with no time limit and no money, <laughs> right? This is just happening. So sort of in a nutshell, I didn't make this happen. The universe brought this to me. Now, to be clear, it's not like I wasn't doing anything. I'd been working on my spiritual path for many, many, many years. I knew as a child that I could see things, could hear things. I went through brief moments of time where I just assumed everybody was like me. And I went through times that I shut it all down. About 10 years before this moment, maybe longer, um, I had a reawakening. I had been putting away my spiritual gifts since uh, a couple of scary moments when I was college aged. And it was becoming really clear that I wasn't allowed to do this anymore. I had to figure out what the universe was trying to do with me. And so I'd been working and learning and studying all sorts of things. I mean, at one point, even years before that, in my search for who I am, what I am, what does the universe want to do with me, I even studied the ministry. I have roughly 350 credit hours toward the ministry. I thought I was a Hindu. I thought I was a Buddhist. I thought I was a Wiccan. I don't know what I thought. I studied everything. I read here. I did this. I was like, who am I? What I know now is that if I put all that in a blender, that's about as close to the truth as you can get. So this friend of a friend calls me and from there, it's like that Prell commercial from the 80s. Those of you who are old enough will remember, you know, and they told two friends and they told two friends, <laughs> right? And the next thing I know, I'm seeing people and it's taking up much of my time. And I start having visions of business cards and things like that. And it grew from there. In this period of time, the universe brought quite a few people into my world to help me. My friend Heather was introduced to me. Now, years later, she's opened up a, a lovely health clinic called the Health Collective. She was a massage therapist at that point in time. And every time I talked to her about, you know, what do I do with this? How do I earn a living and make this where I can spend my time here? She was there for that piece. So thank you, Heather. Shortly after that, I met wonderful family, Terry, Brooke, and Alex, who now years later have a lovely shop called Prana Haven. Thank you to the Prana Haven girls for their support. 
Prana Haven is here in Richardson. They host a monthly psychic fair and they have classes and gatherings all the time. They recently agreed to put cards about my podcast and all the bags that leave their store. And also around that time, I made a connection with Cheryl at Silver Pyramid here in Dallas. Silver Pyramid is an amazing place. I send people there all the time to get jewelry. Cheryl also is a great supporter of me. Thank you, Cheryl. The entire staff at Silver Pyramid gets a lot of credit for helping to grow my business in the first place. Cheryl and I connected, and they all always believed in me. And so with the support of these people, I began to grow. I started a website and, um, you know, just put myself out there. And people started coming. And more people started coming. And I'm not telling anybody what's going on with me, right? My coworkers, my friends. I don't even think I told my father what I was doing till he could go online and read my reviews. And, you know, let that be something too. Because when you're working on something, sometimes you don't need anyone's opinion. And if you don't need it, don't go seeking it, right? Maybe it's just going to slow you down. And so this thing began to grow and grow and interesting things started to happen, right? This is what happens when you use what I call Martin Luther King's staircase (laughs) to become who you're meant to be, right? My favorite quote ever, those of you who know me could probably say it along with me. It is, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just the first step. Now that's Martin Luther King. That's not Jennifer Hall. But. Jennifer Hall part is this. You take that idea of who you are and what you think you should be. For me, it was the fact that the universe needed to, was going to, was planning to use me. And I didn't need to know how. And I didn't really even know why. I just had to remember that that chunk of universe that is me could be anywhere doing anything. And it chose to be right here in this body in this time. And it was choosing to align so many things to make it very clear that I had no choice but to go in this direction. And so I put that idea at the top of the staircase. And I said what I call the magic words, though it's not magic, right? I tell people to say this all the time. You say... This, the equivalent, or something better. This, the equivalent, or something better. It helps you believe, right? You're saying, I can believe, because I'm not saying it has to be exactly my way, this, the equivalent. And it makes sure that you are open to your something better, because that's what you're going to get, right? The thing I saw has passed by and I continue to go toward my something better and I continue to realize how many visions I had even years and years before that day in 2012 that were leading me here and are now I can see right there in the achievable near relatively near future and so the steps started to light up I let Stephanie come and we talked Then I got my website. Then I dreamt fees. (laughs) That was a hard one, right? And I let each thing happen. And then one morning, right before I was leaving for school, nursing my babies, I get a phone call from a local rap R&B radio station. They want to put me on the air right away. Because uh, Rihanna is seeing a psychic. (laughs) And they realized that one of the hosts of the show um, has never seen a psychic before. And though it's not something I see and it makes me nervous and it's going to be while I'm driving to work, I say yes. And I'm on that show maybe half a dozen times. I still talk to clients that found me that morning on the radio and then things happened I did some readings out of a local store in Garland called Metaphysical Way I did some groups there and things like that it was important it was a step for me and I'm grateful 
and I did parties and I did big groups and things that were stepping stones for me, right? I, I say it all the time. I'm not a party trick. I don't want to be a party trick. Not that, please be clear, not that everyone who does this type of work, you know, is calling themselves a party trick if they choose to do parties. I think that there are those of us that are meant for different uses. That one wasn't mine. But it was one of my steps. You will have steps. Don't say no to the steps. Take them. Take them. So this happened and it grew. And then after being with the same principal of my school for about 10 years, someone who just somehow knew I was magic, right? And he would just, he would just trust me. I got a new principal who had no idea who I was. And for whatever reason, he was resistant to me. Um, then, of course, I made a fatal, uh, you know, rookie mistake. And one day I responded to what he was thinking instead of what he was saying. And basically all hell broke loose. <laughs> I realize how important that moment in time was, though. I passed so many tests, and if I had not, guess what? I'd still be there. I would not be here. I would not be the voice that you're listening to. I believe that. Because we have classes. We have tests. We have things. We must graduate from one level to the next. I passed the tests of that gentleman. I passed the tests of having to look at someone who wanted to resist me, who wanted to fight me, and say, hey... I believe in you. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here having this conversation. And so when that summer break began, I told the universe to let me know by the end of the summer that I would see clients, I would talk to people, right, full time for that summer. And if I could see that it would be able to continue to support my family, I'd be ready to take the next step. I did not get the whole summer. I got one month. One month, it definitely was clear. And then I woke up one morning and I could hear the very clear message, it's time. Do it right now. Oh my goodness. (laughs) I called him literally right then. He was on the road on his vacation. And I told him I resigned. And it's all grown from there. Three days after I resigned from my job, my husband found the house I had described to him four years earlier with some very specific details. He found it. And then every mortgage company we talked to proceeded to tell us we were crazy because I had literally just quit my job. Now, I knew it. I could feel the energy here. This had to be the place for us. And so I wrote a letter. I wrote a letter and it said, this is how much I believe that I will bring in to care for my family. And this is my budget. And there was one hour left before we were going to lose the contract when I got a phone call from the VP of underwriting from a company who said, I get to take one chance a year in your mind. Can you imagine the scene that follows? I am waiting at my daughter's ballet class and screaming up and down going, fuck yes, fuck yes. (laughs) Okay. For those of you that don't like my potty mouth, I'm sorry. (laughs) I was so excited. The moms are looking at me like I'm crazy, you know? And once we got here in the space I am today, everything just went pop. It just opened and it started growing and growing. But every time I try to take control, things slow down understand we are not in control and from my perspective today you shouldn't even want control control is overrated the universe is smarter than we are so set some rules when I told the universe I was ready and willing to be (laughs) I hate to say the word used but to be a voice a channel I made two requests I said Make sure that I am safe and that my family is safe. And never, ever allow me to be a hypocrite. Hypocrite is a charged word. I've met many along the way. 
some that made me fall, some that set me backwards because I relied on them too much or I thought of them as that perfect idea of where we were going and then I realized how flawed and human and sometimes hateful and deceitful they could be and it was repulsive. And so, while I will never claim to be perfect, while I may make mistakes, you could never call me a hypocrite. Maybe when I was younger, but not anymore. That is my number one filter. And I will let you know, any of you on a spiritual path, Make sure you're far enough along. Make sure the universe is opening the doors in front of you that you're not pushing them open and shoving in your foot because that won't work. Hypocrites will fail. We are not allowed to be hypocrites anymore. Lightworkers are not allowed to be hypocrites anymore. Back in the old days, not so far old days, people were allowed to be hypocrites. They could teach wonderful things and go home and be terrible human beings. It's not allowed anymore. And if you are a hypocrite, you will get turned off. The universe will turn you off and or will throw so many bricks at your head that you will think it's out to get you. The universe is never out to get you. Pay attention. Follow the signs. Don't rush things. Release control. Allow it. Allow it. And see what happens. At one point, years ago, I started being called out into my backyard in the middle of the night. (laughs) This was before the story I just told you. This was early on. I was an adult. But every night around 2.30, I would wake up and I'd feel like I had to go sit in my backyard. I even kept a bag by the back door with one of those little disposable cameras. Do you remember those? And a hoodie and a notebook. And I would sit and wait. I would see the spirit of my great grandmother sitting as far away as she could on the other side of my butterfly garden near the fence, sitting there. She she never got up, okay? She just sat there and there was something about that energy. Whether it was her or spirit using her image for comfort, I don't care. It gave me comfort. It helped me have calm. And for weeks and weeks, I sat there and I listened. And then I realized, wait a minute. We're the human beings and we need to set some limitations. (laughs) And so one night I prayed. I said, however you want to define the action of communicating with the universe, that, you know, I am a human being and I do have job and I need to sleep and so that stopped and I started to receive information in a different way you know what's also funny is how often the thing we resist is actually the direction we're going I'm being sucked back in time in my own life I was terrified by the image of tarot cards and anything like that when I was a little girl. I'm not a card reader, but I don't think that's why I was terrified by them. It was this idea of where I'm going, but I wasn't supposed to go yet, right? And I had things that started happening when I was young. I remember more and more things all the time. But the one that pops out of my head right now is times that I was out in the world and Someone stopped me. There used to be a gentleman in Dallas. Some of you may have met him. Uh, He called himself Merlin the Magician. And he would be on the streets, um, you know, downtown or in Debellum, the places where people used to really hang out. And I was young the first time I crossed paths with him. He stopped me. My parents about freaked out. And told everybody in the group who he believed I was. I was so tripped out. (laughs) Everything he said was right. I was on a trip in New Orleans with my family. And a woman came running out of a psychic shop. She said, you don't know who you are. (laughs) I was like 13. (laughs) I didn't know who I was. 
I had so many things. Times when time froze. Times when I'd be somewhere with my friends and I'd say, we have to leave. And we'd find out later something happened there. It's funny because the more and more people I grew up with who find out who I am now, I find that <laughs> most of them are not surprised. Most of them have some memory of, of remembering like that that was real even then. It's kind of fascinating and it's comforting as the walls fall down for me. As we awaken, first we want to tell everyone and then we want to hide. <laughs> it's not hiding. You don't have to call it hiding. Just allow the universe to drop the walls for you as the time comes. Let the different people of your life know when they should. It's pretty amazing, you know, because someone might ask me what I do. Most of the time, people don't even ask me what I do, which is funny because I can be in a group of people and everybody's talking about what they do. And they don't ask me that. They ask me something else, right? Or when they do ask me, I might start with something like, well, basically, I'm a life coach. And they say, oh, that's cool. And then they just start talking about themselves or something else. And so it's not like I'm hiding. It's just I'm not forcing my way in the door. And I've always said, let the walls fall as the time is right. And of course, now that I'm putting myself out there like this, they're falling more quickly. And that's okay. The time is right. And my children are powerful. Like, they're not who I was at their age. At their age, if someone had said something bizarre to me, <laughs> you know, I know who your mom is, <laughs> whatever, I would have shrieked. My kids will just put them in their place. I digress. So who is that little brunette? What a podcast. I am Jennifer Hall. I was born and I grew up like all of you. I had glimpses and signs like all of you. What makes me different, if anything? <laughs> I've listened. I've listened. And when the universe has kicked my ass, which it has many, many times, I've realized what it was for. It was an opportunity to level up. And I've gone back and I've said, where did I miss the cues? So that I never miss them again. You can do that too. You can do that too. Follow the path. Let it lead you. Don't question it. Some of us are meant to be in the real world the whole time, right? The empath that is a school teacher is valuable. Sometimes it seems like you'll be there forever. And then there's a shift. And the universe decides to use you in a different way. It doesn't matter. Non-attachment. It means I flow and I grow and if I'm here, I'm all in. I am dedicated, but not committed. I am dedicated to this place, to this time, to the growth there is for all of us. But I'm not committed. People get committed to a hospital. When we're dedicated, it leaves us all room to grow. So be dedicated right where you are and then continue to grow and as you continue to grow you'll find more and more how all of the pieces of the puzzle fit together for example I met a wonderful photographer named Michelle of course I called her Tessa back then when I was pregnant with my twins she took an interest in me and we did a maternity shoot and then she continued to take pictures of my children for her portfolio for years afterwards until she moved. This woman, Michelle, my friend, is now the owner of Wild Child Media and she does all my editing <laughs> and she is great support to me. Did we know that that's where this was going? No, there was this reason somehow that we knew we had to be in each other's lives. This happens when you don't realize 
what's going on. You don't have to realize it. The universe brings people together. The universe brought you here. Listening to my voice. And we can grow this. Yes, this podcast, but this movement of people awakening, of people supporting each other, of people realizing that the path is the path and it grows and it turns and we must trust it. We can grow this together. I do need your help though. Share the podcast if you love it. Support it if you can. If you know someone who might want to sponsor it, please let me know. We need help so we can grow. If there's something that you need to hear, let me know and I'll add it to my list and we'll get it out there. I'm grateful to the love and support that I get from all of you. I am grateful for the wonderful text messages I get and emails I get and Facebook messages that I get. I am grateful for Tina Watley. Thank you, Tina. Shout out to Tina, who has become a patron of the show, giving us $100. Thank you, Tina. That really helps me with the uh, hosting costs. Right now, this is costing me money, definitely not making me money, and I do not want to charge my listeners. So thank you, Tina. Thank you for every one of you who clicks like, Every one of you who thinks, I hope that she gets to continue doing what she's doing because I know that the universe is pushing me here. Is it my dangling carrot? Or is it my peach? It doesn't matter. I look forward to getting to know more of you and I look forward to seeing who you become. In the years since 2012, I have watched so many people embark on their awakening. I am honored and privileged and humbled. I have seen people come in lost and figure out who they are. I have watched people come in confused and end up being wonderful. People, light workers, parents, it's all equal in value. Let's be who we're meant to be. Let's learn and grow together. Until next time, beloved. Namaste. Hi, everyone. I'm Tammy. The universe knocked me down a couple of weeks ago with double pneumonia. During that time, I began listening to lessons from the universe. By the end of the week, I had a notebook filled with notes, and I was a changed person, and I was changed forever. And by changed, I mean the best version of me so far. Old destructive thinking, gone. They'd been replaced with something far better. Even a crummy habit was literally gone. I also knew that Jennifer has a full-time job, the kind that would suck the life blood out of most people. She runs a full-time household, has a full-time husband, full-time eight-year-old twins and animals. I realized that the gift of lessons from the universe came at a great expense to her, yet she had never mentioned the patron tab on Podbean, and I happened to stumble across it, and I clicked on it. I'm now a proud patron of lessons from the universe. Do you listen? Do you benefit? Do you have a dollar a month, or five dollars a month, or twenty-five, or even more? I'm asking for your support of Jennifer Hall and her weekly channeled messages, Lessons from the Universe, so that we may all continue to grow and learn, benefit, and yes, change. I reached out to Jennifer and asked to address you guys. I can assure you that I do not work for free, and my guess is you don't either. Please, please find that patron tab and give back. Seriously, a dollar can make all the difference. It's not the amount. It's the heart and the attention behind the monthly donation. Thank you, one and all. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today for this week's episode of Lessons from the Universe. 
If you love it, please help us attract a bigger audience. More people like you ready to continue down this path to awakening. If you love the podcast, please like, share, review, and let me know how you found me so I can find others just like you. Till next week, beloved. Namaste.